What's up guys, Blindmaster here. You read the title and let's just get right into it without a bullshit intro. So, first of all, we got the most normal, most known stuff. Uh, I wrote down three because there's really not much that I use that's so broadly known. So like the most boomer-ish people, I mean. The people that don't really know too much about computers. Which is just Firefox. It's a well-made browser. VLC Media Player is an OG app. <laughs> Everyone used to have it and I sometimes still use it on my phone, especially on the PC. It's not really that useful anymore since there's other open source apps that do the exact same thing while looking more modern. But I still use it on my phone and sometimes on my computer. Then we got the Office app. Uh, there's only Office and there's LibreOffice. I wrote down only Office because that's what I have installed at the moment. But LibreOffice just deserves the extra shout out because it's also great. <laughs> and it's more known than only Office, so that's why I kind of have to mention it, I feel like. Then there's the mostly known category of the apps that most people might know it, even those that aren't really into the tech world, but they might have heard of it of, or even use it themselves. I use the Nullvet VPN. It's not fully open source, but the client app is, so that's why I decided to mention it here anyway. For messaging app, I have Signal. The encryption protocol is open source. Even other apps like WhatsApp use that, so that's pretty awesome of them. They made something to keep you safe and made it open source so everyone can use it. For recording my stuff, I use OBS like literally everyone and their mother right now. There's uBlock Origin, don't use it on YouTube, wink, because they don't like it, but um, you can use it anywhere else on any site. It's the best ad blocker I've seen so far. Not that I've used that many, but this one's just reliable and blocks pretty much anything you want. Uh, to make my thumbnails, I always use GIMP. It's pretty much the same as Photoshop in my opinion, unless you want to get into the real details, but for the most basic stuff it's just the same, so that's why I don't really bother with Photoshop. What the fuck? Then we got Librewolf, which, which is just Firefox, but looking different. And then there's Qubit Torrent, which sounds very scary and movie piracy-esque, but you can literally just share files that way, and it's one of the most secure ways to do it, I'm pretty sure. Then there's the mostly unknown category. You don't have to be a very technical person to use or underst understand these apps, but most people that aren't very tech handy don't use them. First of all, there's Prism Launcher, which is a Minecraft launcher that Chicken Jockey. just makes it really easy to install mods and shaders and all that stuff. Especially if you're on Linux, that makes it real easy to change how you play Minecraft. Of course, Minecraft itself isn't open source, but the client Prism Launcher is open source. Then there's Linux Mint, which I have used, and I would still recommend it if you are going into the world of Linux. It's, it's pretty much like Windows, it's real easy to understand, and it just works. Anyway, there's a couple of apps I use for my RGB lights, like OpenRGB and OpenRazor. You don't have a Razor app, you don't have an RGB app that's official and pro 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 proprietary on Linux. So I'm just using OpenRGB and OpenRazor. They pretty much do the same as the official apps, minus all the stupid ass pop-ups that drive me insane. I use Aegis Authenticator, it's secure, very simple, and pretty much works like the Microsoft Authenticator anyway. Then I have the Heroic Games Launcher, which is pretty much Epic Games, but for Linux, because Epic Games doesn't have a uh, official client for Linux, so you, uh, you kind of have to use this one. I mean, it's kind of stupid that they're not just making their app more accessible like Steam is doing. But hey, I also use Anki. It's a great app for language learning. Very simple, it's very easy. M maybe not the first time you <laughs> try to use existing cards, but when you just make your own, you get the hang of it and you understand how it works. 
That's how I did it at least. I used the Vesktop Discord client on Linux because it's simply the best. It has a Vancord built in and you don't have to reinstall it every update or something. So it's just Discord but better in my opinion. With a lot of plugins and even themes. Also, I, I, I'm just saying I'm not using a Discord, I'm just saying because it might be against your TOS or something, so... <laughs> Yikes. There's Open Food Facts slash Productor, which is just... Open Food Facts is basically a database with a lot of facts about different food products. And I use this because of the app Productor. Productor just... It's just an app where you can, can scan a product to see where it's from. And I kind of use it to check if the products I'm buying are European, because I personally care about that. If you do, that might be for you as well. But yeah, this is why uh, I use Open Food Facts and Productor. Besides the Google Play Store, I also have the F-Droid App Store of, or Droidify. Pretty much the same thing, but with open source apps. There's Daily You. It's for me it's kinda like being on Instagram, but it's just yourself without all the other people because I don't really like to post personal things like vacation photos on Instagram or whatever. So I'm just using this so I can keep track of my uh, pics. The idea is pretty much you just make one photo every day of or something. Just so you can look back at what you did every day. It's, I don't know, it's kinda fun. There's a Vancord client, which, of course, in quotes, I don't use because I don't know if it's against YouTube's TOS to do so, but it's pretty much YouTube, but with free premium. <laughs> just YouTube, YouTube. This is for educational purposes. I'm just saying it exists, but I'm not advocating for it. Don't use it, but it exists. And it's an open source client. Uh, then there's Streamio. Also, only use it legally, because you can uh, torrent movies from there, and that's illegal in most countries, so be careful what you do it for, what you use it for, okay? Then there's the apps that require some more IT knowledge, in my opinion. I, for my socials, I just use Mastodon, Pixelfed, and mostly Lemmy. You, for these, you just require a little bit of knowledge. And the only bit of kind of IT knowledge that you need to have of these apps are you need to know what a domain is. You don't have to necessarily make your own one, but you just need to know what it is so you understand what they're saying when they say, when they ask you to sign up with a custom domain. Of course, you can just use .mastodon.social, which is just the standard one. But you can also customize it and use someone else's, or even your own domain if you really want to do it so. If you want to get into Lemmy, which is pretty much open source Reddit, I would just pick one domain that kind of fits your needs. I literally picked one that's hosted in the Netherlands just so I get more Dutch posts. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. It really, really doesn't matter. Unless you want to post some NSFW stuff, you need to be on a domain or server that allows that. But if you just want to post normal stuff like me, you can just sign up with any of them. But of course, you need to keep their own rules in mind because they might ban you if you don't uh, comply with those rules. Then we have the true nerd shit that I have. It's not a lot, but it's still something. I have like a home server and I use Proxmox for the operating system because it's just... Imagine if you had Windows, but instead of your Windows, it just opens multiple computers because they're all just virtual machines. You can open a Debian, you can open the virtual windows. You can have five windows in one machine if you really want to. That's of course not what I'm using it for, but you hypothetically can do that if you really want to. I also use Arch Linux, by the way, on my main computer, except for editing videos. I'm using Windows for that still because <laughs> Adobe doesn't exist on Linux, unfortunately. 
and I'm using the Enveavor OS on my laptop because when I tried to install Arc, it failed. It just wouldn't work like two or three times. So I just used uh, Endeavor OS because it's literally the same as Arch, but with an easier installation. So really no downsides so far. And for my terminal, I use Kitty because it's the most, it's, I've used Alacrity before, but in my opinion, Kitty was just a bit better. I can, when I like do like the new fetch thingy, I can have a picture there, a real picture instead of just ASCII art. And in Alacrity that was either impossible or very hard. I don't really remember because it's been a while. But now in Kitty it was just really easy to configure. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, please subscribe. And if you want to add something that I haven't mentioned here, you can just tell me in the comments and see ya.